This week on Security Weekly, while the cat's away, the mice will play. Paul's not in the studio. His wife had a baby! So guess what? I'm joined in the studio by Russell Boschman and Chris Poulin, along with some other fun guests. We've got some interesting different segments for this week. And we get to pinch. <laughs> All that and more coming up on this episode of Security Weekly. This is a Security Weekly production. Broadcasting live from G-Unit Studios in Rhode Island, it's the show where exploits run wild, packets aren't the only things getting sniffed, and the cocktails flow steady. It's Paul's Security Weekly. Security Weekly is brought to you by the SANS Institute, the most trusted source for computer security training, certification, and research. Visit SANS.org to explore the full curriculum and latest training offerings. Onapsis, the leading provider of solutions to protect ERP systems from cyber attacks. Customers can secure their SAP and Oracle business critical platforms from espionage, sabotage, and financial fraud and risks. Visit them on the web at onapsis.com. Pony Express. Check out their line of penetration testing devices, including the Pwn Pad, the Pwn Phone, and the Pwn Pro. For enterprises, there's Pwn Pulse, providing continuous visibility into wired, Wi-Fi, and Bluetooth spectrums across all physical locations, including remote sites and branch offices. For all those hard-to-reach places, there's Pony Express. Visit them on the web at PonyExpress.com. And it's weird. I have to introduce myself, because here's your host. This guy, can you believe it? Yeah, no, Paul's out having a baby. Or had a baby, so he's like doing the paternity leave thing? I don't know, this is the third, I, I can't figure it out. In any case, I'm Larry Pesci, I'm gonna be your host tonight for Paul Security Weekly, episode 468 for June 9th, 2016. I'm joined in studio by Russell Boschman. Hi, Larry. Hi, everyone. Howdy. Russ, glad you could could join us here. Hopefully, we'll have you back a couple more times. Happy to be here. Um, you've got some really fun <laughs> stuff for us tonight um, that we get to play with before the show starts, mm -hmm. but we'll, we'll get to that. Mm -hmm. um, make sure we uh, we introduce uh, the other folks. We've got some folks with us via Skype. Mr. Joff Dyer. Uh, g'day, Larry. It's good to be here again. And by the way, if Paul is having a baby, he's a miracle to modern science. So we should study him and try to make a lot of money out of him. Yes. Does that mean we're going to actually have to cut him open? Yeah, probably. Okay, good. He won't mind too much, though. <laughs> no, I don't no, think. no, no. Just, yeah. Yeah, not at all. Also, via Skype, my good friend, Mr. Carlos Perez. Hey, happy to be here. <laughs> and, and, and we've actually got Carlos on, the, on camera as opposed to that still image of him with the laptop. Yeah, thinking on the laptop. <laughs> <laughs> thinking, thinking. Yeah, that's what they that's what they call it. All right. Um, gentlemen, back room. Do we have any other uh announcements? I know Paul usually has one and you know, I I'm not sure. Something like Misty or any of that th things. They're talking um, in the back. And so we're gonna say no and we're gonna we're gonna go with that. So uh, we can give away T shirts and stuff since it's not here. Oh heck yeah, I mean the cats will play you know. I mean, the cat's away, the mice will play, right? Yeah. And, or just need more drinks because, well, <laughs> it's empty. It's empty. Okay, awesome. And uh, our guest is going to be joining us shortly. But uh, I think before we do that, we're going to jump in and uh, talk about uh, Russ's HoloLens just to be on the, on the safe side um, so that uh, we have adequate time to, to get Chris, uh, Chris Poulin in here and, and wired for sound and all that fun stuff. Uh, so, gentlemen, why don't we uh, we step right into it? Um, uh, Russ is here to to be in studio with me, do the the co-host thing, and have lots of fun. And uh, Russell is uh, an IT instructor at Year Up. 
a graduate of Rhode Island College with a, a bachelor's in English, minor in chemistry, <laughs> master's in media studies, and current PhD candidate. Mm -hmm. So all sorts of fun stuff. Uh, and you've been doing uh, 15 years of all sorts of fun stuff in educational technology and a decade with teaching and instruction and all sorts of technology type fun stuff. Um, and, and you mentioned when we were sort of setting all of this stuff up that you had this really fun thing that you wanted to come and bring. And it's it's one of those things that's not security related, but we want to talk in that with the button a little bit of a security context because whoa. And uh, you you brought your HoloLens mm -hmm. with you. Yes, I did, Larry. Um, yes. So this is the new uh, device uh, that has been uh, all over the Twitter sphere and yes. blogosphere and whatever you want to call it, the internet, uh, or the interwebs, as the students would the, say. The tubes. The tubes. Uh, and so it comes in this uh, clamshell, uh, hard shell case. Uh, and this is the device itself, uh, as you can see. It's sexy. Yeah, it's very, very sexy. Uh, and it fits uh, over uh, the head of pretty much anyone as it's adjustable. You can see me turning this knob counterclockwise, and it extends and expands. Uh, and then you can you know, move it closer or forward. And um, it's a really neat device. It's, it's, it's actually uh, an augmented reality device. I mean, many of you have heard of uh, VR, uh, virtual reality, mm -hmm. especially with the Oculus Rift um, and, and that type of, of device. But this is, this is AR, or uh, also mixed reality, or MR. And um, it's, uh, it, it's only available in development edition right now. It's right. brand spanking new. It came out um, for developers about two months ago. Um, I've had it for roughly two and a half to three weeks. And um, I have to say I'm quite floored with what this can do, as you, we were playing yes. in the studio earlier. Um, I come from about 10 years of, of experimenting and exploring augmented reality. Um, so I have Google Glass. Uh, I started with things like uh, using the Game Boy SP uh, with oh. its dual stereo camera. I know. <laughs> uh -huh. they, had, they had AR gaming uh, and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but this is more for people who are uh, uh, trying to develop in, in sort of uh, 3D three space. And if you think about traditional development um, on the computer, if you're creating 3D things, you know, modeling, sure. Um, it's typically a three-dimensional reality uh, folded into a two-dimensional computer screen. And sure, you can do things like orbit and zoom and pan and all that, rotate and all that kind of stuff. But this, with this device, it's, it's spatially aware. So when you put the device on first, uh, it, it texture maps the room that you're in. And it remembers that, by the way, which I found out was kind of cool using GPS and, and, and <laughs> yeah, lo location. Interesting. Uh -huh. Interesting. Which... California will, that might be interesting. This kind of, yeah. <laughs> and the EU, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hence and, why it's only available in the US and Canada right, <laughs> right now. Right, right. And um, you can actually pull up uh, holograms or simulated uh, uh, objects um, and walk around them and interact with them using your hands. There, there's gesture-based computing. Um, there are, there are uh, three right now fundamental uh, gestures, which are, this is called the ready position. So you've got your fist, make a fist and then put your finger, index finger out, and there's your ready position. And then to click uh, on, on a hologram, yep, to, hit, to click on, a, on, a, um, on an object in mm -hmm. space, you just do this, which I've, try, I've given uh, lots of demos of this, probably about 35, 40 people, and this is the hardest thing for them to, to figure <laughs> out. You would think, yeah. like, because they're trying to do this, like, they're trying to touch, like, you know, yep. the, the sphere and the galaxy. Or, slide mm, and push. Slide, and slide, <laughs> slide, slipity, right, no. So, um, so it's this, it's just a quick, Quick touch, uh, and, and that's like a tap. Um, and then another one, the other one is a, a bloom. And then so it's like this. It's like, what? You know, like you're in an old school Italian family. Like, what are you here? <laughs> Not too far off here in Rhode Island, right? <laughs> yeah, right. And then so it's just this. And then what that does is it opens the menu or closes menus and, and, and that kind of stuff. Um, and it, it, it allows you to cycle through apps uh, and move through the holographic mm -hmm. uh, environment. Mm -hmm. So... Um, there are a limited amount of apps, as you know, it's in development mode right now. Sure, sure. Um, so things like the, you, you had played with the uh, Galaxy Simulator, uh, so you can literally walk through the and galaxy. Around, and around. Yeah, and, and around and under and in. So everybody was, of course, looking at Uranus <laughs> and playing Wait, with it, right? Right, right. Yeah. <laughs> but, t um, touching and yeah, yeah. Pin pinching, pinching, pinching Uranus, Uranus yeah, yeah. right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And, uh, jokes, so the jokes abound. They're the endless. jokes are abound, right. Hey, hey, hey we're, we're all of 15 minutes in. 
And you're already talking about touching your anus. I mean, <laughs> I mean come on. The, the problem. The problem is, is that yep. we're we're overdue by about fourteen minutes. Yeah. Fourteen minutes. <laughs> right. Paul's well, right. not here. No. Nope. Been in ten seconds. I know. I know. See, and he blames me. He yeah. Well, you know, seeing as I stopped, we should take the segue to introduce Chris as well. Seeing as he's. Mm. Surreptitiously joined you on the set. Yes, there. yeah, <laughs> incognito. Yeah. So Chris Poulin has uh, Poulin, right? Yes. Okay, yeah. good. Uh, Chris Poulin has joined us, and he, Chris, now you know the mic works. So feel free to chime in whenever, um, and uh, we'll get you your own interview and all that good stuff coming up. Um, so, Russ, this is only available for developers, and there's a waiting list, and you have to sign up, and it's limited availability. Currently. Right. Yeah. Um, it's not. It's only available to developers, as you, as you correctly identified, and um, so it costs money. I mean, sure. it's 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 you know three thousand um, dollars for the device, and then two hundred for tax. So thirty two hundred bucks gets you this thing, and um, so when you when you know when you're thinking about weighing, you know, I, I teach and I, I love educational technology, and I like looking at investigating uh, innovations in learning. And so this device for me was is obviously the next the next logical step for the pub for the general public. It's we're not you know Microsoft isn't there yet. And as we start looking at ways to develop for it and things that we can do, um, you know, just yesterday for instance. Well, sorry, not yesterday, but Monday. Uh, yeah, yesterday wasn't Monday, right? I, it's all a blur. <laughs> But, but so Monday. Yeah, today's Thursday. The only reason yeah. I know that it's podcast day. <laughs> Monday they released an update for for this device, which allowed you to uh, use Outlook. Uh, before that, you or you were limited to like uh, uh, using Microsoft Edge, and we're not going to talk about Microsoft Edge. And you <laughs> you couldn't download Chrome. Uh, you still can't, as far as I know. But so Outlook as an app now on this device, and you can you can use it to uh, you know sync all your email. So I can now look at my email. Not that I would want to, because after an hour and a half, you get very disoriented because your eyes are continuously focusing on different things, and it's a very strange feeling, a disembodied feeling. Right, right. Um, and when we get to when we get to use it uh, earlier when before the show, uh, it, it was amazing because I said, you know, glasses on, and you said, no, 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 it's going to project right on your retinas. Yeah. So, it, and it was amazing. I have a really you know aggressive prescription, and you put it on, and everything was. Well, everything projected was clear. Right. The room was still fuzzy. Right. Right. <laughs> right. But uh, but everything projected was was crystal. Yep. And it runs, um, you know, it runs a fully functioning Windows 10 operating system, just a little bit different of a build for for the holograms. Uh -huh. um, and so when you look at, I was telling this to Tyler earlier, uh, when you look at uh, Netflix, like I, I was watching, well, Star Trek, of course, right, Jordy, and all that, <laughs> and I was watching, um, say, Star Trek, just to see what the experience was like, as opposed to on my on my Mac. You can literally walk behind the screen and see the movie con or the the show play backwards. Right, so well, not not quite backwards. Right, it's Amir, not Judas Priest in the eighties, yeah, yeah. but yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. So I'm not going to kill myself and other people. <laughs> That'd be awesome. But, yeah, yeah, I know. But you could see everything moving in a mirror, sort of like a mirror uh, symmetry. Uh, right, right. So it's kind of wild. And and the same thing you said with the web browser, you could actually literally walk through the web page. Yep. Walk through, turn around, yep. and it's backwards. Yeah, and then there's a murder mystery game that you can play in here. So it maps your 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 surroundings with a textured overlay of a 1920s abandoned nightclub, and you can look at uh, windows on the walls of your current space. You can't see the you, you can see the current space, but you can see outside the windows of the sure. hollow space, and you can see things going on outside, which is kind of kind of neat. And in fact, in one of the I don't want to give away any spoilers of this sure. particular game, but uh, you're solving the mystery of some some guy. Uh, attempting to kill a child, which is bad in all cases, but the guy is demonic and all this kind of stuff, and then you look outside the window at one point, and he's got a knife looking at you. And so I'm j I literally looked around, and I'm like, oh my god. <laughs> you know, like, oh. and, Time to change yeah. my shorts. <laughs> so, uh, you, know, you know, Russ, it, it, it's, it's funny you mentioned Star Trek, because I've always, I, I'm, being a, I'm a huge Trekkie fan, first mm -hmm. of all, but I've always thought that most of the technology on Star Trek is slowly coming true, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and and this is another example, right? It's it's, it's the uh, it's the holodeck um, coming true, which is fantastic. 
Yeah, and I, I agree. If you, if you look at uh, science fiction author uh, Werner Vinge, he talked about this idea, he called this term singularity. Sure. And, you know, for, for what it is, I mean, a lot of other people have, have, uh, have um, absorbed it and, 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 they, and they spout back something like this, which I'm about to say, which is that we have envisioned through science fiction um, all of the possible outcomes of exploration and innovation and science and engineering the, and we've conquered many of those things, but what do we dream next? Like, what's the next big thing? So you think about flying. Well, we've invented airplanes, right? Uh, you think about deep sea exploration. Well, we're working on certainly going, well, actually, they just did the Mariana Trench, yep. which I guess is the deepest point um, mm -hmm. in the ocean. Yep. yep. Uh, space exploration. Okay, so now we're looking at through Elon Musk with his flying suit that I guess came out of the Pentagon meeting. I don't know if that's true or not, but um, maybe that's the GPS thing that's going on <laughs> in California. Yeah, uh, we'll talk about that later. Yeah, yeah. But um, so you think about, you know, uh, manned mission to Mars or human mission to Mars, to, not to be so, uh, you know, gender. Yeah, so, so that actually brings up the, the, <laughs> the one issue that hasn't been really truly solved from Star Trek technology, and that is propulsion. Mm -hmm. um, just about everything else, you know, we've got the computing power, we've got tablets, we've got... You know, we've got, we've got essentially the equivalent of the communicators. Mm -hmm. and, you know, you've now got the equivalent of the holodeck. All that stuff's been solved. And, and I will also add. A big one. I will also add that uh, there, I saw something a couple of weeks ago that someone that uh, a group of folks have developed transparent aluminum. Mm -hmm. Yep. Really? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> like what? <laughs> Transparent aluminum. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think they actually talked about that in one in, in an episode of, of some sort of sci-fi that I was watching, with that or Doctor Who or yeah, either way. something like that. Yeah, one yeah. of the movies. Yeah. Yeah, it was in one of the movies, yeah. and it was one of those. Yeah. yeah. Well, we have to make this a reality now so that we can house whales on the ship, right? <laughs> but science fiction has always. Oh, sorry, Chris. Sorry. Go. But I was just going to say, not to be a buzzkill here, but one of the interesting things uh, is that we haven't solved a lot of medical problems either. And I was sure. just so I actually only have one functioning eye. Not to be a buzzkill again. But, so, Damn it, Chris. I, I know. <laughs> but I can't use those things. I can't see 3D space. So, so, so the interesting uh, thing uh, about and I'll, that. And I'll say the same yep. thing. Um, I'm at about 40% in one of my eyes. Yep. And so effectively, my left-hand side is peripheral vision. Mm -hmm. And that's about it. And it was great. It. it was oh, great. Oh, absolutely. Right uh, yeah. The interesting thing about this is um, I have a student who had a similar problem. She cannot um, see out of her, uh, it was right eye. So I had given her... Google Glass. Yeah. And so she put it on. I didn't know that at the time. And then she told me after the fact, like, oh, I can't use this. I'm like, why? It's because the reticle uh, or the, you know, the monocle is in on her right eye. And she, can't, and, and she can't use her right eye. So I gave her these. And she says, you know, two years later. And, yep. I, and she said to me, she said, hey, remember, I can't see on my right eye. I said, it's not going to matter. Really? And she put it on. And she was creating holograms in hollow space, like, in five minutes. And she said she could see it all. <laughs> Chris is like... Well, that's bizarre because, I mean, the concept <laughs> is stereo vision, right? You exactly. Yeah. Stereoscopic vision. So if you only have one eye, you can't see. Like, I go to a right. 3D movie and everybody like, else is jigging and jogging yep. and I'm just sitting there. Like, yep. yep. Hey, uh, I put the goggles on so I don't see double. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. That's the only thing. Yep. So exactly. It'd be interesting yeah. to see what, what your feedback is yeah, on this. Because, yeah. I mean, there's two things, right? There's the actual physical uh, vision. So sure. you can have 40%. Mm -hmm. But then there's the your... your uh, brain fuses yep. the image right. and they say that if you don't fuse it by the time you're five you yep. never will yep. right so even if they correct the you know mine is there one of them is a little bit off mm -hmm. and uh even if you correct it cosmetic cosmetically okay. it still never gets through to your to your yep. cerebral right, right. Yeah, your brain your brain will never stitch the images yeah. together correctly and it was that was uh, not to be you know weird buzzkill type of stuff but that was always the thing that drove me nuts when i was growing up is we used to watch a lot of pink panther and you'd see Inspector Clouseau look through his binoculars, and you'd see the representation of the binoculars with the two overlapping circles. And I'm like, what is that? When I look through binoculars, I see one circle. Yeah. I, I, I was totally confused growing up for many, many years until <laughs> I was probably a, in my late teens before I realized, oh, that's right, because the brain puts the two and over. I get it now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that was my, my slow moment. So it's a pretty neat device. Um, <laughs> Your only slow <laughs> well, I, I didn't say my only. I said he was A. Right. It has a built-in also holographic keyboard. So when you're obviously you have to type things. Or you can talk to it. Say, it's not on, so I'm going to say <laughs> We won't say what we were saying earlier. But, oh, yeah, uh, go ahead. No, go no, ahead. No, 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 no. Hey, Cortana is how you trigger it, right? I mean, Show it, me pictures of goiters. Oh, boy. Hey, Cortana. <laughs> <laughs> so, hey, Cortana, and, and she'll come on and she'll do whatever you, well, I mean, uh, you know, some of right. what you ask her to do. And just like Windows 10 does on the, on the Cortana search sure. uh, feature in the bottom left-hand corner. Um, and, you know, it's, it's been a pretty good overall experience. Um, I, I've enjoyed it. 
um, and we're working on putting working on putting together a team uh, to do some development for it for um, business intelligence um, and um, looking at uh, you know complex data sets uh, in in hollow space to Interesting. portray and potentially with uh, haptic feedback devices um, you know portray some sort of feeling towards data so maybe like you can feel how you know uh, uh, a normal curve or distribution might might work. So, so now I'm going to go there because when you start talking the haptic field feedback and the feel of data, you know we made the mm -hmm. joke back backstage about you do this and you do the 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 click and it's kind of like this a is how you click. Yep. It's kind of yep. like a pinch, and I'm like, bring me the porn. <laughs> <laughs> so when I was at CES, there's a there's a there's a I think a ten million dollar investment in this device alone. And you know, not to get too esoteric, but um, the uh, one of the studies in postmodern and posthumanism, which is you know the the bulk of my master's degree, is in this idea of uh, the subfield called teledildonics. Mm -hmm. And I won't unpack that because I don't know the age of most of our viewers. Uh, I'm new. We, we've talked about teledildonics repeatedly on the uh, show. Uh, uh, okay. Yeah. Really? Yeah, we we've hacked uh, current teledildonics devices okay. as a present as one of my presentations at DEF okay. a couple of years ago. So Google that. I'm not gonna <laughs> I'm not gonna define that for you, but look up teledildonics. Which is surprisingly it is a very old term coined by a creepy looking guy. Oh. <laughs> well that's great. You'd have never you'd have never figured that out. No, no. <laughs> No. So uh, I imagine that that uh, the future of intimacy, if you were to use something like this in hollow, what Microsoft calls hollow portation, which is where you can literally uh, oh. port yourself or transport yourself to somebody else who's using another device like this through Skype, and you can create sort of an immersive reality where you are standing next to uh -huh. an avatar representation of somebody else. Now the purchase of Skype yep, makes sense. <laughs> you're right. And then now you have this added, uh, you know, uh, suit, if you will, or device where you can tickle, I don't know, to be, sure, you know, right. PC, tickle each other uh, and, you know, for ultimate end to whatever ultimate end. Right, or to use the, the Unix command line, you know, finger. <laughs> bash. Right, uh, exactly. Bash. bash. Yeah. Yes, exactly, exactly. But so, it, it brings up some interesting hacking potential, right? Well, yeah. You, know, I, I, you can inject I, yourself. I, hmm, that was a bad term. <laughs> <laughs> turn into someone else's experience. <laughs> I think that was a perfect. Yep. Um, and, Larry, and Larry thought he went there, but Chris went all the way there. <laughs> by accident, by accident. Yep. <laughs> right, 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 right. Either yeah. way, either way. All right. um, and, and, and baby, go ahead, Jeff. my PLL injection coming. <laughs> <laughs> and and you know obviously we're a security podcast and I sure. wanted to sort of you know talk about you know the security of you know mm -hmm. some of these devices mm -hmm. and you know thinking about it you know we have a pretty good understanding we've talked about it on the show a number of times about what um, you know DevOps and and so, uh, secure development life cycles looks like you know what does that really bring to a change moving forward with a device like this to these these practices that we've already got. Sure, and you know, I, I would I would venture a guess to say, and I don't want to speak on behalf of Microsoft, so this is me sure. speculating yep. that this was proof of concept. Sure. I mean, it's in the development phase. It's like we don't want to rob this cool technology or rob the society of the cool technology, but with the stipulation that you don't want to be using it to check your bank account because it does have built-in Bluetooth, it does have GPS coordination, you know, coordin sure. coordinate, and it does have Wi-Fi, um, and the level of security is only as good as the software can support. Right. So, using given that it's not a fully functioning Windows. Uh, ten, uh, a full build of Windows 10. Mm -hmm. Therefore, I don't have antivirus on this. So what is that? I mean, you but, can't right now. Right. So now, now how do we do uh, endpoint protection sure. on our HoloLens? Yep. And, yep. I, and I don't know the answer to that. Right. So, so have you port scanned it? And look, but services are exposed to the outside. So I have not. I, I've been so in, you know. <laughs> I, I've been looking at all the content that's available. I have not done a deep dive. Um, what I what I can tell you is that there is a micro USB port on it, which you probably would imagine because you have to charge it. Sure. It it actually gets pretty killer battery life. It gets about um, four to six hours depending on what I'm using. So that, that's kind of wild. I mean, it weighs about I don't know, maybe about uh, I don't know, maybe about three, four pounds. So, well, maybe not that much, but maybe two or three pounds. Um, and and then it does have this port here, which is a, it looks like a standard stereo jack, like maybe oh, yeah. eighth, eighth inch yep. or something like that. Um, but I haven't plugged anything in because not even the instruction book <laughs> tells you that it has that. <laughs> nice. And so I'm not quite sure what I want to do with that yet. Um, or, or 
what you plug into it and will right. make it stop working. Right. Now, all, all, all the more reason to plug something into oh, it. Oh, sure. Uh, but and, and this is my Wi-Fi. money. This isn't grant money, so I don't right. want to be out $3,000. Um, oh, oh there, now there's a good point. And it, 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 <laughs> yeah. and it does have Wi-Fi. It does have built-in Wi-Fi, sure. Um, and what I do like, you know, some of the some of the security things, if you think about, like, uh, when you're at an ATM, people are like, hide your pin, hide your pin like this, right? So you got to do this kind of thing to mm-hmm, put your... Mm-hmm. And so that I, I attended a conference once at CCRI on CyberSec, and the guy was launching a drone 300 feet in the air, and he was able to zoom in with the camera and see somebody just by virtue of where they were typing on their phone, they guessed their password, or forget about the numbers where you can do the swipe password. Well, uh-huh. I forget what that's called on, on Android, but yep. where they do this. And he was able, with 90% accuracy, to replicate that person's password. That's crazy. At 300 feet. So um, this, I will say one good thing, is if you're lo- we're using it with a holographic keyboard, people, like, you'd have to have a much more complex mathematical uh, equation because your head is the mouse. There's a little target, if you imagine like a bullseye. Yeah. And that bullseye is um, where we would click to, on the keyboard to type that letter. Or you, I have my Mac Bluetooth keyboard mm-hmm. that I paired with this. And so sometimes if I'm sitting at, an, at a friend's restaurant or whatever, I'll be sitting like this, like, you know, like in in this period, but I mean, I, I I'm not looking at what's going on on the keyboard, but other people might be. Right. And so it's it's augmented in the sense that it it's sort of like transition lenses. Yep. So if you wear sunglasses, your periphery vision isn't as clear as it would be if you were just you know looking at non-transition lenses with without gradations of 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 uh, uh, shading. And so I would be curious to not – I'm not looking at other people looking at me. So right. maybe they are looking at how I'm typing. <laughs> so maybe that increases the security risk. One of the uses that I'm thinking of is let's say that you're doing instant response. You gather all the data, network traffic, and now you're able to visually see in the air um, all of the interconnections of the network uh, devices, look at all of the event logs, let's say for logging, all of a sudden you can see – this host is talking with this other host. I'm seeing all of this data. And then you can kind of visualize and parse that data in an easier manner than just looking at graphs in, uh, in a screen in terms of, uh, let's say, a Splunk window or yeah. a Power BI window. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I was hoping that given that it runs, uh, uh, granted, it's, it's an alternative version of Windows 10, that it would have a built-in command line. So I could do things like NetStat oh. and, <laughs> and things like that to find out at least, at the very least, what ports were open, what was calling out to what. But... Uh, I have, or even ping it, right? I mean, I'm sure if I dug into the router or did sure. like a firmware update on a router to use like an open source firmware, I could do something like that. But I, I haven't done that. That's not that hasn't That's been, the the focus. been the focus. Right? Yeah, but I would love to <laughs> assemble like a group of people who are interested in doing that kind of stuff and and see what we see. Because that's really give what Larry five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, tell, tell me what network it's on. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, he looks, goes into BF Sense, the ACP logs. Okay, here it is. Yep. Yep. And map. Full scan, give me everything. Oh, WinRM. So if it has WinRM, we can log into it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah and, and that's the other thing, too. There's, and maybe I shouldn't say this, but I will because we're cool people here. There's no login. You turn the device on, you're in. You're a full admin. There's no user accounts. Ooh, that sounds well, like fun. So, <laughs> so, uh, yeah. so wow. all right. right. Yeah. Um, Interesting. You know, and, and, and that's not to, you know, God forbid if this ever if this thing ever gets stolen, um, you know, <laughs> well, it could be problematic. for multiple reasons, right? For multiple <laughs> reasons, right? But I mean, they would have access to you know my Facebook, big deal. But you know, you get the idea. Sure. So and 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 I guess with the new update on, that came out on Monday, which I haven't ex- uh, explored yet, they put in a file explorer. So like I can literally pull up Ooh. the my computer C drive, if you will, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, or I imagine by plugging in the micro USB. Here that I can do a file exploration uh, on it. So that'd uh, be interesting. Yeah, yeah. My w- mind quickly goes to WMIC and PowerShell. <laughs> <laughs> of course it does. That's what I was just thinking. <laughs> and, and you know, thinking about this, you know, we see, if, if we start seeing adoption of this type of technology moving forward, and you know, looking at how people will interact with this type of stuff, to me, this brings whole new levels to the quote fishing game. Yeah. And to the point that, you know, we start talking 
and you know, looking at science fiction and looking at Snow Crash. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, and projecting right on yep. your retinas. Yep. Uh, this becomes really interesting, and maybe maybe in sometime in the future that something like this is going to change the way we need to think, think about developing and and security just in general. So and I think and that's also kind of fascinating. This device has four cameras, by the way, on the front. You can't see them, but it's like bug eye. So you've got one, two lens, three, four lens. So you can see them here. Right, yep. and that's what sets up the um, you know the, when the, you take pictures. Yep. Which, by the way, it does take pictures of holograph of the mixed reality, but they're poor. They're like four megapixel. That's not the number, but I'm I'm exaggerating. In compared to what you see, it's yeah, compared to what you see, great. it's in full HD. Um, and so I, I wonder if you know we could just do multi-factor authentication by looking at your fingerprint. Ooh. So you know what I mean? How how difficult would that be? Uh, you know, it's interesting. I, you guys were talking uh, on a podcast not too recently, um, about or not too long ago, about uh, getting rid of passwords. I yeah. think it was the last one, as a matter of fact. Yep, I believe it was. Um, it was the last one, the one before. Yeah. And it, so it's kind of interesting because being part of the IoT, one of the things that occurs to me is we need to get rid of passwords completely. Forget something that you know. That's it's completely <laughs> ridiculous. I figure everyone else knows it, too. Exactly. Right. Whether you pick it poorly or not, right? There's ways to crack it. And people mm -hmm. implement password uh, storage poorly, et cetera, et cetera. But there's this opportunity with the IoT. One of them is that you lose privacy to some extent, right? Because sure. you've got GPS in there. You've got... Uh, um, it, it, and if you pay, you can track your credit cards. There's all kinds of things that you lose privacy for in the first place. You know, you store a bunch of stuff from your mobile phone on there. But there's also an opportunity to start to uh, authenticate people through behavior. Like, oh, if I have a pattern of activity, like, you know where I go on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. If you know, uh, maybe there's some way that uh, you can track different types of eye movements that are specific to a person. So there's all these kind of opportunities where mm -hmm. you can say, this is Chris because he's got the headset on. His eyes are tracking the way they normally do. He's in a place that he should be. His Bluetooth phone is paired with him. So now you've authenticated to the device, and the device now becomes part of this greater authentication hole, and you can start to, and my car is connected, my, all those things. And you can say, look, this guy wants to get into Facebook. He's where we think he should be. His phone says he is. His hollow device says he is. We're projecting it directly to his retina, which we can potentially observe. Exactly. Yeah, the only part, the only part about that that, that has always bothered me is if we're going to store some sort of signature uh, on th on the information from a biological perspective uh, in in any kind of permanent storage, because you know I, I don't want whether it's the hash of my retina imprint or the hash of my fingerprint, I don't want that out there. I mean, I and, just and, don't. And, and Joff, I I think I get the idea as to 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 why um, because of the password or passphrase or any of those types of things or a uh, two factor authentication key, you can change all that. Yeah, but now change your biology. Well, I mean, even change the Apple Watch right. that exactly. you and I are both exactly. wearing, we yeah. have you know on the inside. In order to take your pulse rate, yep. I mean, it has a green it has a green light and a yep. biometric. You know, may, maybe somehow the, this device or something like it, and or an, any IoT device could somehow check. You know, oh, his pulse rate is where it should be, or her pulse right. rate is he's where not, it he's should not be. under duress to reveal his credentials. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> to, you to know? an extreme. Right, and don't forget that biometrics are identification; they're not authentication. Right. So true. I, you know, that's I, true. So I don't Fair worry enough. about it that much for a lot of reasons because you leave your biometrics where you go anyway. Somebody's <laughs> that's true. You have fingerprints. Somebody can scan your eyes. Uh -huh, and uh -huh. I, I belong. Take to, your DNA. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. Clone you. So it it just says this is Chris, but then you uh, you authenticate through behavior, not what mm. you know, you know. So or you are. I, I love that distinction. Yeah, that's interesting. That's well, interesting. And, and that is a good. It's a good distinction. The other thing is, uh, it brings in the idea of multiple factors, not just mm. even two factor. I mean, you're talking about you know true multi factor authentication, which is that's a huge advantage. Uh, if we can, if we can get there, so and you, and you eliminate the human as a as a participant in deciding how they're authenticated. I think that's the most important part. I mean, don't get me wrong. For us, you know, it makes sense. But really, ninety five, and I'm probably being generous there, percent of the population have absolutely no idea how to choose passwords, <laughs> how to. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, look, I, I was late getting here, and I was just thinking about what a great analog it is, driving is to security. You know, just if people just paid attention and just did what they were supposed to do, they knew how to drive and they had situational awareness, mm -hmm. I would have been here way on time. Right, right, because there would be no accidents. Right. And if people had to get a license to be able to pick a password. Yeah. Hey, well, Self-driving cars. Now there's a thought. Good, let's there's get more a... government involvement. That's brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> No, no, no. Pri private organization. Privatize it. Privatize it. Like CISSP? 
<laughs> all right. Oh, all right. Okay, maybe not. Maybe wait, this is a wait, good wait. idea. I was thinking wait, that way you have a million dollar idea. Wait a minute. No. Anarchy, anarchy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you never know. We might come to that. Well, yeah. Je Jeff Mann's not even here, and he said CISSP. PCI's coming next. Oh, I said it. <laughs> <laughs> well, see, then you could use this device to do behavioral modification or behavioral tracking to verify that you're actually using your credit card chip and behavior. But if it, scan, if it scans rooms real time, then it can scan behaviors and map them real time and then simulate them as a sort of hollow authentication. Mm -hmm. right? not, not only that, but j just imagine surveillance. Let's say I have oh, yeah. the patterns of, of movement, behavior, cadence of walk of somebody that I'm looking for. Even if they mask themselves, they put a wig on, and this is scanning all of that environment. Let's say they're walking down the street. All of a sudden, this can trigger like this has the same... Rhythm of step, cadence that the suspect that we're looking for has, or he has the same mannerisms and all of, the, all of that other kind of information. So this opens the door to useful things as creepy things also. Yeah, no, oh, definitely. Yeah. Agreed. Definitely. Well, we're entering the era of creepiness anyway. Quite honestly. <laughs> we're already Look, entering. We've been, we've been there for <laughs> quite a while. <laughs> That's right. You know, it's interesting. There's that show, uh, Person of Interest, where uh -huh. the whole yeah. premise uh -huh. is that they stitch together reality through all the video cameras and things like that. We're not that far off no, from no, being no. able to do that. We just need the Batman did that, We too, just need the readily one. accessible computing power to make it happen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I'd argue. And access to all the data, of course. Which is Oh, wait, trick. wait, wait. Cloud drink. <laughs> <laughs> I would, I would, but I, I drank it all already. <laughs> uh, so, uh, so gentlemen, any sort of final thoughts on the on the Hololens? I fascinating stuff. Um, I like thinking to the the future about where some of this type of stuff is going to go and how it's going to impact you know all of our security models and, yeah. and those types of things. Oh no, I mean, my only thought is, can we give, get Microsoft to give us one so that we can hack and break it? <laughs> yeah, three grand I, is a little expensive. Yeah, I yeah, spent fifteen hundred bucks order, on sure. Google Glass, and I'm I, not going to do that again. I can order two, so I have another one that's floating in my account. But I'm not shelling out another thirty. This is for education, right? Right. If, so, if we want to do like a Kickstarter, happy to donate that second one <laughs> to you guys. So, know, there, there's an idea: Kickstarter yeah. to hack, to Ho hack Holo, the Holo the Lens timeshare, Holo uh, hacking. Oh wait, coin oh. that now. Grab right. that domain: holohack.com. Uh, hey, hey, Larry, I can't, I can't, I can't. <laughs> La Larry, and sit on my hands. <laughs> Larry and I have an awfully bad habit of registering domains during the show. So, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yep. So, so uh, uh, real to that gets expensive. Fast. Yeah, to di that diverge does. real quick, you were mentioning one of the apps on there is um, LSD. What yeah, it's it? called. Yeah, so it's called um, LSXD, and with LSD in capital letters, and yep. and you know, so all it does is you know just maps in a trippy way with sound. Mm -hmm. uh, and patterns, and simulates a, um, let's say, 1960s uh, under the influence of some sort of substance. Right. Mind-altering substance. Mind-altering substance, substance uh, event. So, and we looked at, I, well, I looked at holotrip.com. Somebody already has it. And it's one of those catch-all websites that is like, oh, you want to go on a holographic trip? Go here and click here for, you know, Tel Aviv or whatever. It's like, yep. yeah, it's cyber, yep. somebody's cyber squatting. Junk. So, yeah, but, so yep. fun, fun stuff. It'll be interesting to see where where a lot of this stuff stuff takes us. And mm -hmm. I'm really excited to see something like this take off. Because um, as I get older and my eyesight starts failing, I can, I, I, you know, I wait for the day. Sign me up when then I can put the plug into my head and have it projected directly to my brain. Because that sight will be crystal clear no matter uh, uh, until the the neurons degrade. So sign me up. Oh, I'm <laughs> into. All right, so let's uh, let's take a quick break, and we'll come back momentarily with uh, interview with Chris Poole.